Would you rather stab me in the back? Hey Transformers fans, welcome back to the channel. Man, time flies when you're geeking out, doesn't it? Today we're taking a trip down memory lane and delving into the origin story of one of the baddest bots around, the Mighty Bludgeon. Now, if you've been keeping up with the Cyberverse cartoon show, you know this guy's got a seriously intense backstory. But hold on to your Energon cubes because we're not stopping there. We're also cracking open the comic vault to explore Bludgeon's story arcs on the pages. So buckle up, Autobots and Decepticons alike, as we peel back the layers of Bludgeon's history, from animated adventures to ink epics. Let's see what makes this skeletal samurai such a force to be reckoned with in the Transformers lore. Get ready for a ride through the metal mayhem. It's Bludgeon's origin story like you've never seen it before. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. Channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Bludgeon's Backstory in Transformers, Cyberverse. All right, let's talk about Bludgeon, the Decepticon samurai you do not want to mess with. Picture this, he's not just a regular bot, he's a pretender, rocking a shell that's all about that skeletal samurai vibe. And man, does he own it. This guy is like the Bruce Lee of Cybertron, but with a seriously wicked energy sword. They say he's a master of Metallicato, some ancient martial art on their robot homeworld. Basically, he can slice through the battlefield like a hot knife through butter while the rest of the bots are stuck in slow-mo. Bludgeon's not big on chit-chat. He lets that sword of his do all the talking. Autobots, Decepticons, it doesn't matter. If you cross him, you get a one-way ticket to Laser Town. But it's not just about the sword play. He's got a whole arsenal going on. Shield? Check. High-voltage electric cannon? Double check. And get this, he can whip up smoke clouds and shoot electric fireballs like it's magic. The dude's basically a metal wizard. Now aside from being a total beast on the battlefield, Bludgeon's got this whole mysterious vibe going on around him. He's into the whole honor thing, sticking to this ancient code that's probably older than your grandma's family heirlooms. And he's not just your run-of-the-mill Decepticon. He's got charisma for days. No wonder bots are lining up behind him like he's the metal messiah. When there's a leadership vacuum in the Decepticons, guess who steps up? That's right, Bludgeon takes charge. And he's not shy about it either. The guy's got confidence oozing out of his circuits. But here's the kicker. For all his warlike demeanor, Bludgeon's got a soft spot for the mystical. He's superstitious, like he's got a lucky charm stashed in that samurai shell of his. In a nutshell, Bludgeon's the Decepticon you want on your side in a scrap, but you might want to avoid him in a dark alley, unless you're into electrifying fireball shows. That's Bludgeon in brief, vicious, aloof, and ready to bring some serious metal mayhem. Now check this out, Bludgeon's Earth escapades were like a wild metal roller coaster. So here's what happened, Starscream kicks the bucket, and all the Decepticons gather for the memorial, including our main man, Bludgeon. Then there's this epic showdown with Hot Rod, the Autobots playing ninja, dodging Bludgeon's sword like he's in a cyber ballet. Hot Rod slips away like he's late for a bot party, leaving Bludgeon swinging at thin air. But wait, there's more. Megatron and Optimus Prime decide to have a meeting to deal with the Starscream mess. Bludgeon's on the nemesis for the ride, witnessing the whole shebang. Things get crazier when Slipstream gets shanked by Bludgeon while escorting Windblade. Chaos erupts, peace talks go out the window, and it's all because Bludgeon decided to be a party crasher. Now, the Decepticons are on an epic Starscream hunt. Sometime after that, Shadow Striker sends Bludgeon on a mission. His big revelation? Starscream's Monster Squad is like a slice and dice buffet for him. But here's where it gets spicy. Windblade's out for vengeance. Bludgeon's all ready to finish her off, superhero style, when Wheeljack drops in. Mega Magnetizer? Check. Anti-Gravity Modulator? Double check. Bludgeon's left floating in midair like a metallic balloon. Fast forward, 
Bludgeon recovers, zooms back to Cybertron, and ambushes Windblade and Teletran X. They stumble upon Vector Sigma, and it's showdown time. Bludgeon's slicing and dicing, thinking he's the metal master, but whoops! He missed Wheeljack pulling a sneaky move with unspace material. Windblade obliterates his sword, kicks Bludgeon toward Vector Sigma, and bam! He's stuck in unspace goo, like some kind of interdimensional timeout. No coming back from that one, and that, dear friends, is the tale of how Bludgeon went from Decepticon badass to Cosmic Space Oddity. Talk about a bot with a one-way ticket to the void. Bludgeon. Original Background Story of Bludgeon Now, in the Marvel Comics continuity, he's not just your average bot. He's rolling with the reformed Mayhem Attack Squad. And what's their gig? Hunt down and take out the Decepticon turncoats, Carnivac and Catilla, plus their new Wrecker Buddies. So Bludgeon's on a globe-trotting adventure, tracking Carnivac down to Los Gravos, Mexico. And what does he do? He takes a page out of the dramatic villain handbook and runs his own sword through Catilla. Talk about a cold move. It's like something out of a death metal soap opera. Now Carnivac's not taking this sitting down. He's all fired up swearing vengeance on Bludgeon and the Mayhem crew for offing his buddy. Fast forward, Carnivac steps up to lead the Mayhem attack squad and goes after some big names, Jazz, Bumblebee, and Grimlock. But hold on, we've got teleportation drama. The rescue patrol's about to zap to Earth, and what does Bludgeon do? He's not a fan of the whole road trip plan, so he shoves his blade into the teleportation gadget. Such a classic villain move, right? Instead of stopping the Autobots, they all end up in the center of Cybertron, holy ground and all. But does that stop Bludgeon and his crew from attacking? Nope. They throw it down, and Bludgeon gives Jazz a run for his money until Bumblebee whips out a sneaky move. Bludgeon was then lured into a canal, and off he goes in boat mode. It's like a metallic chase scene, but the Autobots still make it to Earth in the end. And just when you thought Bludgeon had enough action, he's helping imprison the Autobots after Optimus Prime does the whole surrender thing for a shot at an alliance against Unicron. Bludgeon's just living the Decepticon dream causing chaos and taking lives. That was a classic bad bot move, but hey, that's Bludgeon for you. Bludgeon's got a wild ride in the Decepticon Civil War, and it goes like this. Scorponok bites the dust, and now there's a big awkward alliance between Autobots and Decepticons. With no leader, Bludgeon steps in with a grand plan. But guess what? It's not all sunshine and Energon cubes. After Scorponok's demise during the Unicron Showdown, Bludgeon steps up to lead the Decepticons. Cybertron's practically falling apart, and the Autobots and Decepticons decide to play nice, at least for a bit. Bludgeon's not having it, though. He's got his own agenda and starts scheming. In true Decepticon fashion, Bludgeon decides peace isn't his style. So what does he do? Sneakily sabotages Autobot ships and takes control. It is such a Bludgeon thing to do. Then he goes all dictator, giving the Decepticons a fiery speech about how peace is for the weak. The troops eat it up like Energon popcorn. Now on their stolen spaceships, Bludgeon decides to randomly pick a planet for conquest. Enter Klo. The poor Clonians never saw it coming. Bludgeon's crew storms in, trashing the place and thinking that that'll be easy. But hold up, the Autobots catch wind of the situation and show up for a surprise party. Bludgeon's ready though, and sets up an epic ambush. Only a few Autobots escape the Decepticon beatdown, and Bludgeon sends a little hunting squad after them. It's like a deadly game of hide and seek. Just when Bludgeon thinks he's got the universe on lock, Optimus Prime makes a dramatic entrance from the afterlife. But Bludgeon's not having it, claiming it's against his Decepticon religion or whatever. He orders an attack, thinking Prime's the bad guy here. Such villain logic. Turns out Prime's got some divine backup or something, and the Decepticons get their shiny metal butts kicked. 
The last Autobot shows up, reviving fallen Autobots left and right. Bludgeon's forced to throw in the Energon-soaked towel and admit defeat. He and the Decepticons pull a hasty retreat, promising a terrible time to the Autobots and telling his troops they're just biding their time for the next round. And that's the saga of Bludgeon, from Decepticon leader to Cosmic Exile, all wrapped up in a metal showdown and a reluctant retreat. Talk about a bot with a flair for the dramatic. How Bludgeon went from deceptive schemes to a headless showdown. So Prime thought he had Bludgeon in the defeated and done category. But surprise, surprise, Bludgeon's a crafty one. When the Empire popped up, Prime was under the illusion that Bludgeon was bluffing about his plans. It turns out Prime was a bit slow on the uptake because Bludgeon was actually planning on stirring up a boatload of trouble on his own. So after some battles over ancient alien weapons, Bludgeon gets back to his favorite pastime resource stealing. But this time, he's got a plot twist in the works. He's building a new batch of Decepticon warriors who just need the Matrix to hit the reboot button. To lure Prime into his web, Bludgeon goes all out with a full-scale Earth invasion. Such a Bludgeon move, right? Prime takes the bait. But here's where things get spicy. The newly rebuilt Megatron shows up, wanting to snatch the Decepticon command back. Bludgeon's no pushover, though. With one slick blade move, he takes out Megatron's gun. But oops, he underestimated the new and improved Megatron. The old leader literally rips Bludgeon's pretender skull off with one hand. Talk about a rude awakening. He transforms into his tank mode for a showdown. It's like a metal world war, but Megatron's not messing around. A few moves and boom, Bludgeon's toast, and Megatron's holding his severed head like a trophy. And that, dear friends, is the grand finale of Bludgeon, all in the name of chaos and conquest. Talk about going out with a bang. Bludgeon's last stand in Regeneration 1. So Bludgeon's got this prominent warrior's honor complex, all thanks to a messy retreat on Klo that left a stain on his metallic pride. No amount of Decepticon conquests and victories managed to clean up that mess. So after two decades of brooding and meditation, Bludgeon gets this vision of his glorious death on Cybertron. Dramatic, right? Now he's itching for revenge. He pulls some strings, contacts the Fort Skyke base, drops hints about having secret agents, and asks for a bit of something special in exchange for taking on the Autobots. Guess what he scores? The Matrix-infused remains of Lord Thunderwing are the magical spark Bludgeon needs to bring life to his Blitz engines. These bad boys are like self-regenerating war machines on steroids. Bludgeon kicks off his siege on Cybertron, dropping Blitz engine troopers everywhere and wrecking Autobot defenses but he's not in a rush to activate his super weapons. He has to leave something for the victory party, right? At his troops nagging, Bludgeon finally caves and launches a symbolic strike. He hacks into the Autobot surveillance feed, making them watch as all the city killer weapons rain down. Bludgeon sends his troops down to join the Neo Decepticons, but he's holding out for his final showdown. Enter Rodimus Prime, the guy Bludgeon's been waiting for. The two clash, but when Rodimus catches his blade mid-swing, Bludgeon gets a reality check. Quick as all hell, Rodimus tosses Bludgeon out, letting him crash and burn on Cybertron's surface. And here's the icing on the cake. Rodimus finds Bludgeon's scorched body after the battle. The guy's barely hanging on, practically begging for a warrior's death. But nope. Rodimus Prime's not having it. Instead of granting Bludgeon the glory of defeat, he orders Autobot medics to patch him up and throw him in their prison. Ouch! Talk about a double whammy of failure and humiliation. Bludgeon's Dark Dance with the Fallen. Now picture this crazy Dark Ages scenario. Bludgeon and his buddies decide to form the Chaos Trinity, thinking they can harness the dark forces of the universe to spice up the Autobot Decepticon drama. But wait, their amateur activities are interrupted by none other than the Fallen. This mysterious being who waltzes in, claps sarcastically, and offers them a deal they can't refuse. Initially, Bludgeon tries to play the tough 
guy, rejecting the Fallen's offer. But, surprise, surprise, he folds like a cheap card table and agrees to the servitude gig. Now, the Fallen's got them on a Transformers catching mission for this weird ritual called the Unbinding. But here's the kicker. Bludgeon's not happy just taking orders without a reward. Even then, he and his friends hatch a plan to snag Grimlock and Jetfire, playing on Grimlock's twisted sense of justice. The Trinity sets up a trap in the neutral territories, and Grimlock walks right into it, being the hothead he is. They capture Jetfire, thinking they've got everything under control. But hold on, Grimlock's not taking the bait about Jetfire being a traitor. Cue Grimlock crashing the party and the Fallen stepping in like the ultimate party pooper. And then, while the Fallen's doing his creepy ritual thing with his victims, Bludgeon and the gang are stuck defending an access shaft against the Decepticons. Bludgeon's all about that loyal service and fighting on, but eventually, even his iron resolve crumbles. He ducks underground to find the Fallen, thinking he'll get some rewards for his trouble, only to get gunned down like a rusty old tin can. Talk about a plot twist, Bludgeon went from a dark arts enthusiast to an underground escape artist, but in the end, he ended up with a one-way ticket to bot heaven, or maybe something not so heavenly. Such is life in the chaotic world of Transformers. Bludgeon's grand plan gone massively wrong. So what happens is that there's this wild scene on Cybertron, okay? Bludgeon and his gang decide to crash Thunderhead Pass, taking out a bunch of Autobots who are snooping around. Classic deception move. Jetfire, being the voice of reason, tries to tell Bludgeon to chill, but Bludgeon's not having it. He's all about guiding Cybertron to greatness, or so he claims. He spills the beans on this grand plan to use Thunderwing, the big bad bot, as a sacrifice to bring back Cybertron's former glory. Bludgeon throws shade at the Autobots, saying they saw Cybertron dying but did squat about it. Then, bam, he drops the bomb. He's planning to copy Thunderwing's grafting process. Jetfire warns him it's a bad idea, but Bludgeon just brushes it off. So picture this. Thunderwing gets all powered up, and Bludgeon starts playing doctor with the remains of Autobots. He's chatting about how Thunderwing's grafting process was brilliant but untested, and now they've done their homework to control that power. But here's where it gets messy. As Bludgeon and his crew try to slap on their exoshells, things go haywire. It turns out they aren't neuro-aligned or something, causing a significant brain meltdown. Now they're stuck in a mental prison of their own making. It's a Decepticon science experiment gone wrong. Talk about a major oops moment. Marvelous Verdict well, there you have it, folks, the epic journey of Bludgeon in the Transformers universe. We kick things off delving into his Cyberverse cartoon adventures, where he's like the Decepticon Samurai on a cosmic quest, slicing through enemies like butter, bringing that dark, mystic vibe to the Cybertronian battleground. But wait, that's not all. We dove into the cosmic realms, where Bludgeon cranks up the chaos to 11. From forming the Chaos Trinity, dabbling in dark forces, to trying to upgrade himself with Thunderwing's powers, he's like the Decepticon mad scientist with a sword. And let's not forget his grand plan to sacrifice words for Cybertron's glory. Talk about thinking big. Whether he's leading the Decepticons, clashing with Autobots, or getting tangled up in his own schemes, Bludgeon's journey is a wild ride through the metal realms. So next time you see that skeletal samurai on the screen or in the comics, you'll know there's more to Bludgeon than meets the eye. This by has got a legacy as intricate as his Energosword techniques. Thanks for joining us on this Transformer tale. Catch you on the flip side, Autobots and Decepticons. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.